Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to finally get this video posted. I have missed sewing so much. I have been so busy with my daughter's wedding, which came off without a hitch. Um, I may post one picture later on in the video, the upload. But today I wanted to finally post a tutorial and my blocks number 41, 42, again um, before I get into blocks 41 42 and 43 I wanted to uh, talk of two things I wanted to talk about um, I got this bag clear back I don't know it's been a month or so ago I went this morning for a brace tightening I still have about a year and a half left uh, my teeth are fairly straight a lot of people are commenting on you don't need braces your teeth are straight um, but I have an overbite issue that my orthodontist is working with me on. Um, so that's why I'm wearing braces. But anyway, this morning I went for a tightening and um, I came back home and I started to do a little bit of cleaning after the big wedding that we had. And I found this bag and I know it's from the quilt store in Boise from about a month ago when I went to get my foot pedal fixed. And I forgot about this bag, so I'm going to do a quick um, peek in here. I honestly have not looked in here to remember what I bought. I do remember it was for a few supplies for things I needed to finish other projects. But um, today we're going to investigate together some red that I'll probably be using on my on my 4x5 quilt block from Quality. It looks like about a yard. <laughs> oh, I got, I believe there's a block... Um, I don't know the number of it, but it's opposing colors. So you do, you get the same pattern. And I've been looking for um, some blues or blacks to do this on. And this looks like it's a dark navy mottled blue. And it is a, I want to say it's a Lisa Bonjean. It is. It's a Primitive Gatherings, um, Star and Stripe Gatherings. But they're contrasting colors. So the same pattern. Use this for that block. Looks like I got some more reproduction Civil War pink. I love bubblegum pink. I think that's one of my very favorite um, Civil War reproduction fabrics to work with. Uh, a shirting. This looks like a Joe Morton, my all-time favorite. Um, oh, a Kim Deal. Woo. Okay, well, she is working with Joe on a book, so it's a Kim Deal. Um, looks like I got some Joe shirtings, a little charm pack. Um, Joe Morton is my absolute favorite fabric designer. I love all of her, all of her stuff. Uh, looks like a fat quarter of some sort, just a tiny little fat quarter. Quilt Crossing, Boise, Idaho. Um, I did get a, I know what this is for. This is for something for my granddaughter's second birthday. I'm going to make her a quiet book. And I needed a, a primary color zipper. Two more things. Simple Reflections, a journal for memories and musings. This is by Kim Deal. And there's just um, blank paper and then recipes on the opposite side. And I wanted to, looks like recipes and pictures. I wanted to write down a couple of um, thoughts on my quilting. Um, I've had a, a girlfriend that did this for her children and grandchildren, and I thought this was an appropriate book to write it in. Raspberry Kiss Thumbprint Cookies, too. I have to make those. And the last thing looks like 
Um, at the quilt crossing, they have a big barrel of um, probably at, they're into the bolt cuts of fabric and um, they tie them in knots like this and you get the whole thing for a discounted price and so that's probably what this is from. Uh, Andover, this is probably a Joe, I'm going to say. Yep, Joe Martin. It's kind of a brown, um, gold, tan, white print. And there's probably roughly a, between a half a yard and three quarters of a yard, I'd say, in this. Anyway, that was new to me. I, um, I'm glad I opened that little quilt store haul with you. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I have been having a really, really fun time uh, reading this. I can identify with Joe and Chip Gaines on so many levels, but yesterday, as I'm about halfway through, but yesterday as I was reading this book, I was in tears with laughter. Um, two things I really can connect with, with Joe on and Chip is Joe is an introvert and I am an introvert too. And even though it may not seem like it because I am um, making some uh, YouTube videos is I connect really well with those friends that I have one-on-one. -on -one. I prefer small groups and that's um, very characteristic of an introvert. Um, and I prefer one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it is hard to get to know people that way. Um, but if I, I'm the kind of person that if I want to make a friend, I will, um, I will strive really hard to um, make that connection anyway. And Joanna is the same way. In this book, she talks about being an introvert. And the second thing that I was, I mean, a couple of their house adventures, my husband and I have renovated and restored three homes. I don't wanna say that we flipped them as fast as Chip and Joanna have, because we've lived in them for a little bit longer than they um, have. The first one or so was eight months. The second one was about a year. Um, but <laughs> the in all of them, she said they never they never had TV. They didn't want TV, and I can relate to that. Um, my husband and I have never had a cable bill. Um, I think TV is there's a time and place for TV. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. If I want to keep up on the news, I have just a quick headlines that are blurbs on my cell phone that I keep abreast of the times. But personally, if I have time for TV, I have time to read. And right now I am in a mode in my life, and I have been for the last five or six years, where I just want to learn as much as I can. If I do watch TV, I like the um, National Geographic channel or I read, I read a lot I, and I want to just observe and, and learn. I'm like a sponge right now. I wanna learn as much as I possibly can. With that said, when it came to the part where Chip and Joanna have never had TV, I just had to laugh because a lot of people think that I'm odd because I do not have TV um, in my home. Uh, my home is my space and I don't um, really like things invading my space. So, um, I'm having the best time reading this book on just so many levels. I can relate to so many things they're talking about in there. Just even the um, prelude in this book had me in tears with laughter on a, about a houseboat. I mean, if some of you have read that, I can relate to that story. Um, anyway, really, really good book. Um, the three book blocks we're doing to this week again is 41, 42, and 43. We'll probably pick up the pace again next week and do four or five more and start cranking through some of these. Um, but I will leave you now with the tutorial on these three really, really fun blocks. Okay, our first block was number call. It's number forty-one called sidewalk chalk, and this block 
I picked these three to do a little bit more of a tutorial on because they are very beginner friendly, but I wanted to talk about a few things. This block was a lesson in organization using these um, designer boards that Lori Holt was so ingenious to create. Notice I'm making units here uh, and I try to keep the units together on my design board and I always make a mental note of which is top and which is bottom. The top of this one was that blue with a round white circled uh, print um, and I try to as I'm chain piecing, which is what uh, a lot of these blocks utilize, as I'm chain piecing, I keep them all in the same direction. I either go top to bottom in the block, in the configuration of the block, or I will go clockwise. This block was definitely a top to bottom organizational block. Um, and then as I sew, I leave the strings all attached and I go and I iron them in the order in which they are pieced together. Uh, I make units, I go and iron, I cut out the ironing uh, segments in these videos so that it would obviously speed up um, time here. And this, all three of these block tutorials were, I recorded them as, at regular time, but I sped them up to two times. So it looks like I'm speedy demon uh, quickly sewing here, but really I just sped up the video, the editing process. Anyway, uh, I make units. I put every the units back up on the design board after they're ironed so I can make sure they're in the right um, order. And then I go to chain piece and then I go to iron. So it's kind of a continual chain piece, iron, put them back on the design board. Chain piece again, iron, put them back up on the, on the design board. Here I have all my rows put together now and I'm starting to put, or all my pieces made into rows and I'm starting to put the rows together. But again, even when I'm piecing a quilt top, I like to make a mental note of the color of my block that's in the top right hand corner. Um, here you can't see it because it's folded over as I started to piece it towards, or towards, I started to piece the row one and row two together. And right now I'm working on row three and row four, and I will put it back up on the design board after I've ironed them. <laughs> but you can see that I've made a mental note that that blue at the top there in the top right hand corner, I know that's the top of my block. Um, to me, this makes it so much easier if the doorbell rings, if um, you have pets and they jump up on your lap, um, if the UPS man comes with a delivery, whatever happens to be the case, I know where I am if I have to leave my block and I'm interrupted to go take care of, of something. Um, here I am all done with my block. I went and ironed it all together. This is just a picture of the mess that you think you have, but really, once you get organized in your mind um, and you go iron it, it makes a beautiful block. The last thing that we cannot forget is squaring up that block, which I went and did off camera. And here I am doing my stay stitching. And as a long arm quilter, I cannot emphasize the importance of your stay stitching around your entire quilt top. This um, is just the block, but um, this block, once I got it starched, it was a very flat. Um, here's the back of it. All of my seams are ironed open, and um, the front was nice and crisp, and looks like I caught a couple of scorch marks there, but the second block, uh, 42, was called Twister, I want to say. Uh, this block was a lesson in those stitch and flip method half square triangles and I use a friction pen um, and my ruler to mark my half square triangle angles. These I like to put all, arrange the blocks in the way I know they're going to be and then here you see me folding those in half square triangles, laying them the way they're supposed to go 
and then folding them over so that I know exactly which way those half square triangles need to go as I'm sewing them, I guess I'm saying. And then once I get them all uh, the way I would like them, notice I'm starting to go clockwise. I start in the upper right hand corner and I will work my way around the block. Block number 42 is just that, where 41 was a linear, I guess I would say, a linear block. 42 is very, um, it, it leads itself, it lends itself towards a clockwise motion to put this block together. Chain piecing is um, very helpful in, in all of these blocks. Here you see where I cut off, just kind of eyeballed, and I'm using a pin to mark the top one so that I know that goes in the top right hand corner. I went and did my ironing, and I'll show you another method here in just a second, uh, but a pin is one way to remember which way you started and which block, which unit, I guess I should say, goes at the top right hand corner. Um, I take my pin out now, and you'll see the second way I know how to mark which way I'm going, is I will leave the string, um, the leader string, the leader threads, on this next grouping. And I notice, again, I'm going clockwise. It just helps so much with organization. Even if I had to get up right now, if the doorbell rang or I had something that um, needed to be done, Sometimes I have to interrupt my sewing to go put fabric softener in my laundry or whatever the situation may be. But notice I'm leaving the string on and I will go iron that whole line. Seems open. And I know that that line, the, the thread goes in the top right hand, excuse me, top left hand corner. So I will construct my block going backwards. And I utilize those design boards and they are just so handy to keep yourself organized so you don't miss sew. You don't sew something going the wrong direction. You don't sew something backwards or upside down. It is um, just a really nice way to stay organized. The closer you get to the end of your block, the less you have to worry about that because now you just have two units there, basically a four patch, put them together and sew them um, and then go iron it open again. It's just a really, really nice way to stay organized. Lori was um, ingenious, I think, in creating these design boards. And there the block is finished. I think I went here and I pressed it. And the last thing I have to do is do my stay stitching around the block. Um, one eighth of an inch in, I believe I s uh, set my stitch length to be smaller than I normally would for piecing and block number 42 was done. I also, um, there's the pin, I just wanted to take a still shot picture of that. The pin is one method to remain, to teach yourself to remain which which unit remains at the top as is the thread unit. Um, there are my seams ironed open and the finished block. I love the pink and the blue, um, just love that block. The last block we're gonna do is a major lesson in just chain piecing. Um, chain one right after another, and because this is basically a 20 patch, I guess you could call it, um, you're gonna have two, we'll call them strings here. Um, the first, chain piecing unit you'll have are two uh, rows together and then see I break my thread and I just lay it there but notice I left my thread on that my 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 leader thread so I could tell what went to the top again I'm going to do that again and leave my thread on it leave my thread on both of them I did make a mental note that the red the solid red there went in the upper left hand corner and the second units now I sew those all together this portion is kind of a difficult one because you kind of have to really mess with um, lining those up just so. But really, once you get going on them, they're a snap. Um, cut my threads. And here this wobbly thing is. 
<laughs> I went and ironed my seams open and here I cut my threads and I started just to piece them all together. But if you cut your threads while your unit, unfinished unit, is still on the design board, um, they really, it helps so much. Um, it, it really, really does. That's all I will say about that. Um, line up your seams really, really well. And you'll see by my pictures at the end, this one was off a little bit, but there's so much going on in this block. Um, four times five is 20. There were 20 pieces in this block. Um, and they were bigger than some of the pieces that we have worked with in the other blocks thus far. But um, I believe this one was called Coverlet, and I can see why. It was just a big, basically a big quilt with small pieces. And you see me just putting them back on the design board. I have two seams left. And I believe at the last of this, I did not iron this seam open before I put the last row on. But still, in my mind, I had made a mental note that that solid red went to the top left-hand corner. Um, one more row. I ironed my seams open and then I um, stay stitched. And again, like, like I said, as a long arm quilter, I really like it when people stay stitch their entire quilt top. It keeps it from stretching when that quilt top is under um, tension on my long arm machine. If you have any outside seams, they keep them from preventing them from popping open. And I just, um, I think it helps quilt, quilt your quilt Blah. Sorry, I can't talk with my braces. It help. It helps keep your quilt square. So um, anyway, enjoy the rest of the video, and I will see you next week. <laughs>